Watching the monkey. Your highfalutin at the door. Okay, and so here we're on. I literally hit this hit record. This is All Kevin right. Polk. I'm half of the co-host team of the Art of Being with the Act Matrix podcast. Yep. Milton Alia here. He right. So if you're on YouTube and seeing us, he's the one at the bottom of the screen. Of course, he's labeled. And we have a guest today that's going to tell us the wonderful world of Kung Fu Panda. Yes. And yeah. how it relates to flow and the art of being and such. And that is Ron Pizzo. And uh, he hails from Canada. And, uh, and I'll let him tell more about himself. And so uh, that's what we're up to today. So Ron, you're on. Tell us a little about yourself. And So I, I've been, what, I work with, well, I work with Kevin, or Kevin teaches me the ACT Pro Social Matrix. And I'm part of his ACT Mastermind group. I'm also a lawyer in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And I practice uh, litigation law where people hate each other. And so that's why we need the matrix, right? <laughs> yes. hate things around. Why Bring can't the matrix to law. Yeah, that's right. So I love it. And I, uh, I've been doing <clears throat> Tai Chi for many years. And of course, uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, I think I'm grown up, but my wife would disagree. <laughs> I love watching Kung Fu Panda, right? I've ah. watched uh, the movies, all three of them. And the one that I want to talk about today is the one, uh, the second one, where Poe at the beginning of the movie is tasked with finding inner peace. Oh, it's a worthy goal. A worthy now, goal. Who, now, who told him to do that? Yeah. So it's his in Master Shifu. Oh. Who taught him Kung Fu. And so you got to, Master Shifu is like a little, I think, a rat. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. And of course, Above Master Shifu, the big guy was Ugwe. And Ugwe was the turtle. He's the one accredited in the movies with discovering Kung Fu. Oh. So Ugwe left the instruction to Shifu to, ta to teach the dragon warrior, Po, the panda, right? Uh, to teach him inner peace. As uh, every, and he says, every master has to. Uh, has to accomplish or has to master to become a master you have to learn inner peace mm. Mm. so the way that movie opens is when Poe is there to talk to see Shifu you see him this his master standing under a waterfall and there's a drop of water that drops from the waterfall and he and his teacher catches it in his hand and then he manipulates the like the water drop between his hands at the very end, drops it off into uh, a flower without the water drop ever breaking. And, uh, you know, in, in sort of Tai Chi terms, that's being extremely sensitive. Yes. Not letting the weight of the water, like, disperse on your hands. Yes. So you have to be present, you have to be aware, and you have to be soft, and you have to exercise this inner peace, or else the water, a little drop of water, will just break on your hand and just make your hand wet. I'll say, so his hand is moving? Oh, yeah. His hand's like doing a Tai Chi form, right? Yeah. Okay, so, and, so his hand's moving. He's hand yielding, 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 yeah. yeah. right. yielding to the water. Yeah, right. Yielding to the water. I get it. Right. Yielding yeah. to the water, right? And switching the drop of water from one hand, from left hand to the right hand, to left hand to the right hand, until he lets the water roll off his hand into a flower. Whoa. That's okay. Hard to do. I, can, I don't think anyone can do that. I can't do that. He's, he's going with the flow. He's going with the flow. And he said, you need inner peace to connect to the flow of the universe. Okay. And he described why he learned inner peace. It was because when Kung Fu Panda, when the panda first became the dragon warrior, he said it was the worst day of his life. He hated it. And he just like, didn't like that. Didn't, you know, was very upset. But um, since he, garnered inner since he learned inner peace he learned that the problem was him mm. and not the panda right and so when he knew that he was and he was able to let those feelings flow out of him he was able to rejoin the flow of the universe and have this inner peace Ooh. Ooh, pretty deep right and yeah, uh, yeah and that's how the movie starts <laughs> that's how the movie starts right and so 
Then you have Kung Fu Panda going off and trying to save the world and save Kung Fu right. because of Lord Shen, the peacock, discovered um, gunpowder and made these cannons. Yes. And all the masters were powerless against the cannons and they were just hiding from them. And so when, when he's trying to rescue, when Kung Fu Panda goes off to rescue the world from Shen and rescue the Kung Fu masters, he starts having flashbacks because Peacock, apparently, well, the whole story about Kung Fu Panda goes back to when he was a little kid and he was orphaned from his family. And uh, he had, he didn't remember much about that whole episode. Oh. Uh, Shen, he started having flashbacks and started learning that Shen was involved with uh, killing his mother were involved with the fact that it required him to be saved and his mother saved him, right? And so as he was fighting Shen, he'd have these flashbacks. And of course he couldn't fight anymore. He'd freeze and he got injured quite badly. Flashbacks were really getting in the way for him. Flashbacks were really getting in the way, right? Almost, I'm not, it's like I would imagine what PTSD would be like. Very much. Yes. 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 Right? So, yes. Yeah, they were portraying that, yeah. yes. Yeah, so like you lose present moment awareness and then, you know, everything goes bad. So... Anyways, there's a there's a goat. They call it the soothsayer. And, and anyways, panda. Was oh, the goat friend. is a soothsayer. Oh right? yes, the goat is a soothsayer. It's not right? the greatest. It's not the greatest of all time. It's a no, goat. no, 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 no. Anyway, <laughs> <real> goat. <laughs> okay. Panda gets injured in a fight. He's floating down the river. The soothsayer grabs him out of the river and puts all these acupuncture me- needles and gets him back to health. Right. Okay. And then Poe wakes up. And uh, she starts talking to him, saying, you've been suppressing the truth. You've been suppressing these thoughts, right? It's time for you to learn the truth. So she's encouraging him to connect with the thoughts that he's been suppressing about learning the truth about Shen, about his mother, about what happened. Oh, so his memories are getting in the way. His memories were getting in the way. There was, yeah, he didn't, he was kind of intentionally, unintentionally suppressing them. And she said, you have to get in touch with them. Yeah. So you see him, and then she says to him, this, before he goes out, before Kung Fu Panda goes out, it gets better to go out outside in the field to practice, I think, Tai Chi, to get inner peace. She says to him, your story may not have had such a great beginning. Right. But it's not... But that is not who you are. And she says, who you choose to be. And she says to him, who are you, Panda? Yeah. Who? Okay. Right. Yeah. So then you see the Kung Fu Panda standing in the field and there's in rain. And then he catches a drop of water and starts going through all the Tai Chi moves like Master Shifu did. And, and all the while he's having memories of what happened when he was a child and what had the whole story. Right. Mother about how his mother was killed by the wolves about how his mother saved them. And as he was letting those memories flow instead of being stuck with him and then also manipulating the water at the same time, he was able to join the flow of the universe. Right. So yes, by letting them flow, he was able to, in other words, as we would say, contact the present moment. Yes, and which is where the water droplet is. Right, where the yes. water droplet is, and you've got to be very present to manipulate that water droplet, and yep. he conquered inner peace. Whoa. And then he was able to go off and fight Shen and protect the honor of Kung Fu and protect the people and, uh, you know, restore peace and order. Yeah. So he, he could then tap into the flow, right. which allowed oh, yeah. him to which allowed him to do what he wanted to do and decide, and really to define who he wanted to be, right? Whoa, okay. So there's a, a number of stories. It's not just the fact that you, um, there are two things really. It's that it's this whole idea of not trying to suppress the memories, but letting them flow through so you can mm-hmm. flow. And also this whole idea of choice, you know, choosing what you do. And that defines who you are. And I think that's what the matrix ultimately does. It gives us the power to choose, right? We, by noticing uh, and noticing what's going on and noticing what's important and what really truly matters, 
regardless of who you are, regardless of whatever inside thoughts you have, you can choose a path to move you towards your valued living or who is important to you or what's important to you. So that's, that's what Kung Fu Panda does. He tells, you know, despite these things, you've got to get in the flow. You've got to make your choice and who you are depends on what you do toward who or what's important to you rather than being stuck by these difficult thoughts that take you out of flow. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, just to let folks know, as Ron tells that story, obviously I am, I have a matrix imprinted on my brain because I've been doing it for 10 years. <laughs> and so when he talks about those memories showing up, uh, those trauma memories showing up, uh, I picture them showing up in the lower left-hand quadrant. That's where we represent them, is the lower left-hand quadrant of the matrix. And your urge, anyone's urge, uh, is to not have them, get rid of them, because they're unpleasant. Because they're unpleasant, traumatic memories, and you don't want to have them. And the very instant you do that, you're not in flow. Yeah. That's, it, that's just, it just takes you out of the flow. Uh, the, uh, when you accept them and uh, make them part of your flow, that's in the center, in the noticing, present moment awareness, part of the matrix. Uh, the noticing part, if nothing else. So you can notice them and notice the water at the same time. And do your flow thing at the same time. So that's sort of, oh, Bill wrote it all up for us. Senses at the top, urge and mind at the bottom. Trauma memory shows up. He's also done a loop for us for the people who are listening on the podcast, meaning the loop, meaning you try not to have the trauma memory and then it comes back all the more. And so you try not to have the trauma memory again and it comes back all the more and you're in the, what's known as a stuck loop. Uh, Easy to do. Been there myself. So, uh, but, and that's where uh, Panda, young Poe, Poe, Poe was stuck in in the stuck loop. He was in a stuck loop. Yep. So Poe was in the stuck loop with trauma memories, but yes. Shifu was in the stuck loop with the stories he was telling himself. Ah. Oh, yeah. Right? So yeah. it happens two ways. It's not just trauma memory. So, oh, yeah. But even at work, you know, when something doesn't go right, uh, well, just think of it. We all tell ourselves stories. We drive it oh, down yeah. the road. We see a person. And depending on what that person is doing or how they're standing, you, you can't inevitably you create a story. And start thinking Definitely. a story about them, right? Right. When things happen at work, and I've seen it here, um, and people are disagreeing, it's because when someone says X, the person receiving it creates a story. Automatically. Automatically creates a story, right? Yep. And those stories may or may not reflect reality because we yep. just don't have enough data, right? right. And uh-huh. so like when Master Sifu said, the problem is mine, and it's because of all the stories he created himself. Because when, when, when Poe was first picked to be the dragon warrior, Poe hadn't done any kung fu, had no appreciable skill. Oh, that's the first movie. Yeah, the that's the one. Right? Yeah, okay, that's right. one, right? And he had, and, and the master had five other students he had trained for years and years and years who were highly skilled. And so he was just beside himself when Ugwe the big guy picked Poe out of the group to say, you're the dragon warrior. And, and he kept saying to Ugwe, how can this guy be the dragon warrior? What does he know about Kang Kung Fu? Look at him. He's overweight. He's fat. He's slow. He has no coordination. And so all these stories that, that Master Sifu was telling himself was the problem. Yeah. And that's, and that's, in fact, if you go back to the first one, you'll see Ugwe saying to him, if you can't teach Poe, then you're not a true master. There you go. You have to teach the student you have, not the student you think you want right. or you need. Yeah. It's kind of like the, the master becomes the pupil, right? The Ooh. master becomes the pupil, right? So, right. and so that's when Poe, so, and that's true of everything. I mean, you know, when we get into a situation or we get in a conflict, yep. we tell ourselves a whole bunch of stories. Yeah. And if yep. we start believing them and we yep. start, you know, we'll start acting in ways that that don't get us to where we want to go, right? Well, your ears get plugged up, your eyes close. Right. right. 
and say, why am I talking to this person? He's, this yeah. person is an idiot or this person doesn't understand or this person disrespects me. How can they say that? They want to be disrespectful to me. And so you start telling yourself, it's not just the feelings, but the stories you start telling yourself about the situation that get in the way. And so, and so this idea of noticing and understanding and choosing, yep. saying, you know, that's my story, I get it, but I'm gonna to choose to do something different. Yeah. yeah. There you well, go. That was just what I do next. Right, and that defines who you are. Yes. And that kind of brings, you know, uh, Kung Fu Panda is a kid story. I, I get that, right? Doesn't sound very kid-like to me. Well, I mean, there's, but you think about, and I always go back to this Victor Frankl. Yes. Yes. Right? And his, and my favorite saying it, well, it's attributed to him, but it may not be him, right? They don't know if he really actually said it, you know, said it's between stimulus and response, there's a space, right. and that space is our power to choose, and in that choice lies our freedom and our growth. Yes. Same thing, you know, terrible circumstances, and, you know, had every right to feel that when he was in the concentration camp, uh, a prisoner to the to the Nazis, mm -hmm. every right to feel angry, every right to feel pissed off, mm -hmm. to feel oppressed, to feel like, you know, just wanted to lash out at the world and every right to feel there was nothing good about this world. But what he did notice is those people who gave into those feelings were the people who didn't survive the concentration camp. Yeah. It's the people who made choices choose to see that the sun still, you know, shone and that they could appreciate a warm summer day or that they could relieve, give relief to the suffering of others. But these people understood that despite everything that the you know, Germans or their captors could do to them, there were still choices and still things they could do which their captors could never take away from them. And, and, there that, you go. and those people tended to survive. Yeah. Got yeah, no guarantee, but they, no. they survived no. more. They had something to move toward. Move toward. They had purpose they, and mission. They had purpose. They have purpose yeah. in life. Exactly. Yeah. Meaning. <clears throat> sort of. Phil and I have been talking a lot about nihilism lately. And so the yeah, nihilist. Yeah. The nihilist. Mind, you're right. Yeah. Who might see no purpose. No. But the people who find purpose, they make it. So yeah. important to have purpose. <clears throat> so anyway, way cool. Yeah. So we, all of us can get many lessons from watching Kung Fu Panda about flow. Oh, about yeah. flow, about choosing, noticing. Yes. I, I think the hard part though, you know, I deal with a lot of workplace conflict dispute. Yes. Mm. And the hard part um, is in getting people to understand that they have some choice how they react to situations. And well, they always have choice, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And the problem is when you're so stuck into blaming, uh, you, you, if you tell someone to exercise choice, they almost think like you're telling them to accept what happened. Right. Or to accept their lot in life, which is not what you're doing. But that's a story that gets triggered in their head. Yeah. And I've seen that many times with, uh, well, obviously, lots of different. Obvious, I say that from the point of view of a clinical psychologist who practiced for 30 years. Uh, so I've heard many people get on that. You know, you're just telling me to accept. Well, they're, they're in those words when they're saying, you're telling me to just accept my lot in life. Right. Now, of course, you said none of those words whatsoever. Nope. <laughs> yeah, but, but somebody is telling them that it's, it's their mind <laughs> and they're all right their mind is telling okay. them that and that's the story and that what my point on that is that's the story that yes. from my few words rattles in their head very quickly and it comes back as that's the story i wanted to hear that's that's the story yeah. I'm, I'm going to play and in conflict situations it ends up you know, most conflicts don't end up in, in really bad places, but some of them do. Uh, they end up in very, very bad places, murderous places. And uh, so one must be careful of those stories in your head. Uh, and, and, and in that case, those stories, I want to go 
to, I'm going to go to matrix land. Okay, folks. And, and something about flow. And I was talking about earlier is at the top of the matrix, you can say there's the senses. And then right below that is the amygdala. So right up there is yeah. a part of the human brain known as the amygdala. And it can do things without choice, like get you out of the way of a bus and pull your hand away from a burning flame that you, you know, or you've touched a hot stove cover and boom, your, your yarn jerks away, you know. So uh, I am not going to sit here and say that you contemplated, gee, do I need to take my hand away from the hot stove lid? No, your hand just flies back away from it. So that's not the choices and ways that you can intervene. But all of these stories that, that Ron is referring to, ah, that's the stuff of the prefrontal cortex, that's uh, Kahneman would call that slow thinking, right, Ron? Uh, yes. That, that's the slow stuff. Yeah. And over that slow stuff, yeah, you got choices. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can notice that stuff. Uh, and you can notice whether you want to go with that story or not go with that story. Uh, go with that response, not go with that response. And that's what he's referring to is that, uh, you know, do you need to buy and respond to, you know, all the yucky memories in your head uh, in the same way every time for the rest of your life? Right. No, because <laughs> those have long since become part of your story. They're not an amygdala response. They're a story response. Uh, and you can change the story. You can change your relationship with the story. Uh, and that's, that's what Ron's referring to. Yeah, you know, I, I've been reading this book, a book on leadership. I just don't know if I can't remember the name of it right now, but they were talking about people thinking they're right. And they believe... I've never met one of them. <laughs> hey, anyway, weird. They were describing... <laughs> Even up there in Canada, I guess. <laughs> you know, sometimes, well, I won't say much about Canada. But anyway, <laughs> Stay out of the politics. This is a podcast, right? Yeah, a pod, yeah, right. We're, and we'd be nice. We're all over the place, Ron. <laughs> we're, we're, a very, we're a very kind, loving yeah. podcast. So, uh, right. So, uh, anyways, I'm reading this book, and, and the author was saying, you know, being right or thinking or being right is really a feeling. Yeah. And it yeah. is um, a, 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 like a conclusion or an or unavoidable or an inexorable thing that you're going to – that you that you are right. It's more how you feel about something rather than whether you really are. Yeah. Well, and then you defend it. Right. And then you defend it. Right. So, yeah. you know, it's, that's kind of cool because people say, well, I'm right. Or they think they're making good decisions, but it's oh, yeah. they're convinced it's, still, of it. it's still a story they tell each other. Right. And you can be clouded. So once you got that story of being right, if something doesn't work out, it, you can yeah. come up, well, I was right, but here are all the reasons these people screwed up, this, this didn't happen. Yep. Instead of yep. actually looking at the situation to, to try to figure out truly what didn't work. And yep. that's why, you know, the matrix is so powerful because people can leave. I tell people, you know, when they learn that they don't have to be right anymore, they just have to do things that are workable. That are workable. Exactly. There's that word, Ron. There's that workable word that we get to. Right. So if you understand it right, it's just a story I tell myself and start looking at what's workable. And then I can start looking at something more objectively, like getting into the flow, getting into the five mm. senses, looking, yeah. seeing what actually happened. Yeah. Yeah. Noticing people's responses. Noticing people's responses, noticing how. And then, then it's so easy for a manager to understand, you know, well, maybe what I do just doesn't work for everybody else. So I've got to do something different, although I might be right. If it's not workable, why do I keep doing it? Well, exactly. I, mean, I always come back to the T-shirt I see every once in a while. Is like, uh, it goes something like, do you want to be right or do you want to be married? Uh, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> you can't be right and have a relationship. <laughs> and then it goes, if you don't want to do marriage, do you want to be right or do you want to be in a relationship? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it gets to that. Uh, but so many people huh, – huh, a lot of people forget that, you know, and it really becomes, I have to be right. And if I have to be right, guess what? Uh, 
the other side of yeah guess what that makes everybody else everybody else becomes wrong at that yeah. point uh and you know and even somebody as kung fu panda as poe might get a little bit testy when he keeps somebody keeps coming up to him and saying i'm right yeah. and entailed in that is you're wrong <laughs> He might even get testy about it after a while, and, and that's what we all do. We we right. all say. Well, so, but if you want to get back in the matrix world, this idea of being right, although it might be a, not a yucky feeling, it might be a great feeling, mm -hmm. would still show up on the lower left. It shows up in the lower left because it's scary. Right. It, it it's entailed, and when I say entailed, folks, that just means it's connected to. Let's connect. It's connected to fear. And the fear is you're not right. And in this world, this Western world, which includes Canada, by the way, uh, that we're all brought up in, being wrong has some seriously bad consequences to it. You flunk tests. It's you know, built into us, right? right. You, don't, you don't graduate high school. You know, <laughs> you, <Yeah. laughs> all, all kinds of bad stuff happens. It goes on your permanent record, right? Yeah, stamped uh, on your forehead. But yeah, you're wrong, and all it just it it's it's just built into us to have a very negative connotation of not being right. That is being wrong, and so when you start defending that position of I'm right, well, then the fear is I'm going to be proven not to be right. Right. Yeah. Then I got to defend it even I, more. Got to dig in even harder. Right. Right. I got to dig in hard and do it, and I'm sure uh, in in. Not that I've been in your world, your litigation world, but I'm sure that shows up in that, yeah. that world. Oh, yeah. Well, very much so. Everyone, the biggest fear is uh, not being seen as a good litigator and, you no. know, not performing. Mm -hmm. and, and that thing is just always, it's always in the way. And that's, you see people, they go to court, they start stuttering and they, they're not presenting well. They're worried. You, you can just tell her. That's what's going on in my head. Their amygdalas firing off. There are, and right, they, I was doing this thing. Uh, so I'm going to do this film of, of, for tennis players. And if you think, Ron, if you've ever been on a tennis court, there's a there's a matrix right in the middle of the tennis court. There's the horizontal line of the of the net, and there's the vertical line of the service lines. You know, and then there's the four service court so th there's just a freaking matrix so here i am a tennis player and i'm first in that wow there's a matrix there uh and uh, the whole idea of doing the video is trying to help people notice and get back into the flow and the thing to notice at the top of the matrix on the other side of them is their amygdala yeah. uh, <laughs> and so your amygdala is screaming at you uh, and it will cause you to stutter if you're trying to be a lawyer, you know, and do lawyerly things in a courtroom, you're, you're going to be stuttering. Uh, or if you're just a tennis player, you, you suddenly lose the ability to toss the ball in the air. Uh, <laughs> all kinds of stuff that happens when you're operating out of that amygdala, which is, which is responding to the fear. And that's what you're referring to, yeah. is yeah. you get afraid. And then blah, 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 I can't talk anymore. And mm. uh, I lost my lawyer vocabulary and <laughs> I'm going down. <laughs> I'm going down. Right. Uh, and, and you can thank your amygdala. <laughs> thank you, amygdala. <laughs> uh, because it wants to do the responses and those are fast responses. Yeah. And your prefrontal cortex, which is where all that great lawyerly language is and stuff, is, is deep within your prefrontal cortex. And so the amygdala is winning. It's first. And, uh, uh, yeah. so, so you lose your, you get tongue tied and all kinds of stuff. So the thing is, is to take a deep breath, notice your amygdala. Uh, and, and, but the same thing was happening to Kung Fu Panda, right? Oh, yeah. oh, so yeah. the trauma memory shows up, you his amygdala fire. fires. You freeze. Uh, yeah. Yeah. His amygdala fires. He starts uh, responding as if it was danger now, yep. instead of no, it's just a memory. It's not dangerous at all. And but your your amygdala doesn't want to respond that way. <laughs> it wants to say no, no, get out, get the heck out of here, right? Yeah. And and flow goes right along with it. You know, <laughs> no more flow. Uh, so uh, so anyway, we talk about that. So I'm going to do a video that has a matrix in the tennis court it'll be fun uh, but anyway same stuff so uh the well, i guess what i'm referring to is how this 
uh, concept of flow goes everywhere in life. Yeah. Including in your relationship. It was definitely. So let's like yeah. say Phil sitting at, the, I'm going to pick on Phil. He's sitting yeah. at the, I'm sitting at the break. He's sitting at the breakfast table and, you know, and suddenly he thinks, you know, I'm right about this. No, you were at my breakfast table with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he might as well look across the table and see his amygdala. <laughs> yeah, up the other, my upper, amygdala having a conversation upper, right upper, now. Upper end of that, knowing yeah. that he just triggered that it, now his amygdala has to be on guard. I must be right. All right, I, that, for I must be right. right. <laughs> and once you've triggered that response, well, it is. It's going to be looking for any signs that oh, yeah. somebody is suggesting that you're not right. Anything that's going to poke that thin veneer is I'm going to go after or retreat. Right. And instead, if he said, you know, I'm just looking for workability here. Yeah. Well, uh, amygdala doesn't really respond to workability. Yeah. No. It, don't, it don't give yeah. a flip. Yep. <laughs> Workability ain't the amygdala's business. <laughs> so, it ain't sniffing uh, around for workability. <laughs> it's like, yeah, go ahead, prefrontal cortex, do what you ever yeah. do. I don't care. <laughs> I'll stand down for right now. I'll, I'll, I'll just hang around. Well, looking I'm for waiting dance. for the next one. Waiting for the no, next one. No, but if you cue <laughs> me up, you know, you cue me up with, I get, you got to be right. I'll be right here for you. Not a yep. problem. Uh, and so that's what happens with folks. And so uh, part of what uh, Ron, and you heard him so eloquently say, was that you're looking for workability. Yeah. Switch it to, is this workable? Is this thing yeah. that I'm doing workable? Yeah, workable yeah. in the moment, too. Because as I recall the, the movie, you know, the plan evolves as they go through. The, 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 the whole, there's a rescue and all this stuff, but it's, it's a vague kind of, I'm moving toward this. And he, that's right. the moment, in the flow, and things just are happening, including right. when they start firing back at him, which was, I, I don't want to give too much of the movie away for those of you who haven't seen Kung Fu. Panda. Spoiler alert. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, right. We now have the urge to go see it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and instead, we have the urge. Uh, I got to go see it. So, yeah. well, actually, I got to queue it up on my computer and watch it. Oh, yeah. uh, but uh, nevertheless, cool stuff. Way cool stuff about flow. Flow. Right. And uh, Kung Fu Panda, and I'm sure other movies, can teach us about flow, but especially good old Kung Fu Panda. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and of course, the character they use is a panda, which are known as sort of slow moving, lumbering yeah it's a tease word not graceful not graceful no. and all that stuff and uh so the, of course they may make him into a karate kung fu master yeah. uh and now tai chi master oh yeah wow yeah. you know it's interesting uh it's uh you know you watch k kung fu and you think of this traditional stuff and they're all punching and kicking and doing everything really quick but you don't I guess when you start doing talking with the guys who, you know, like my teacher, who's, who's done all sorts of martial arts all his life and you start looking at quality of movement, mm -hmm. you really start to realize how animals like pandas have such a graceful and powerful quality of movement. Right. Yep. It's just yeah. a flow movement, right? And yep. just, yeah. And you can't get away from it. It's very strong and very powerful, and the grips are strong. And although it may look slothful, if you get in, you go with any bear, for example, if you get in their crosshairs, you're done. Right? That would be a bad idea, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That would. laughs> Most definitely. Yeah, so uh, flow, folks. So this is an extension of our previous flow webinar, obviously. Uh, and uh, if you haven't listened to that, go back and listen to it. Yep. That's what got us on this topic. That'll, that'll set you up for this one. Yeah. Yep. And uh, we got we, we forgot, we got to do our Patreon plug. Uh, oh, hey, did I change the name of it, uh, Ron and Phil? Uh, it's now, it's not the name, I changed the link. It's patreon.com slash art underscore of underscore bean oh, nice. that's what i had to do okay. uh but patreon art of bean and right. uh, and there you go you'll come to our site and uh you can uh we'll see it 
Yeah, and I'll even put up this uh, webinar up there. Yes, I get to it. I put flow up there, so I'll yeah. I'll put this one on the Patreon page itself. So okay. under the posts. So this has been great, Ron. So now, what are you going? What's your movie you're going to tell us about next? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know we're working on it, right? Well, okay. Star Wars. I kept. I want to tell everyone that Star Wars is truly a love story. Uh, well, okay, you're on. Okay. We don't, we, we don't, we don't, don't like, <laughs> it's a love story, really, really, it's a chick flick, you know? But don't spoil your podcast, we'll wait, don't okay, everybody, wait, wait, yeah. that's your, that, that's, that's your thing. Teaser. That's, that's a teaser, teaser. trailer. That's your right. teaser. <laughs> come here and uh, come back, stay tuned for more, where Ron explains uh, Star Wars to us, and uh, that'll Star be Wars, fun. a love story. And, and, and part, story. And, and for anybody out there who thinks there's no way I could come on that podcast, but yeah, you can. Oh yeah. Uh, one, we make sure everybody feels comfortable. There's no way we're going to confront you, make you feel bad, anything. We're, it's just not our art of being. It's just not what we do. Um, as a matter of fact, we're pretty convinced. At least Phil and I are on the side of. Oh, this conflict stuff is highly overrated, and yeah. it doesn't seem to be working to get us where we want to go in this world. So uh, we're just not going to do that kind of stuff. Yep. And one of our favorite things to do is talk about movies. Uh, we have somebody coming on next week. Well, you know, you sort of know her, uh, uh, Ron Leanne, one of the, the mastermind yes. uh, people, is going to come talk to us about books oh. and, uh, and matricize not a book, but books in general. Great. <laughs> so that'll, great. Be a, <laughs> that'll be an interesting uh, uh, romp. Uh, so anytime you, anybody out there that has uh, something that you would say, gee, that'd be interesting to talk about in terms of the matrix or not. It doesn't have yeah. to be. Just Come interesting on. to talk about. Yeah. Let's do it. But yeah. Uh, yeah, read our sort of our manifesto kind of stuff uh, that, that we put on the, uh, Patreon, Patreon. Yes. Dang it, boy, I have trouble with that. Pa the folks at Patreon pronounce it Patreon, it. not Patreon. <laughs> Patreon, um, and uh, that uh, you know we're here for peace, love, and understanding, and all that good stuff. And we're nice folks and want to be kind, and uh, yeah, the opposite of what you hear in some other places. And uh, so that's what we do. And thanks, Ron. So much for coming on and letting us well, thank you. Yeah, thank thank you find out about that. Hang on a second. I'll turn off the recording here.